safetybond.org, siliconangle.com, reference point for tech, tech innovation. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of wikibond.org. Claude Barrera is here. He is the chief technical strategist and distinguished engineer, IBM Storage Group. Where, where should we even start? Um, Metadata. You have metadata, <laughs> metadata, we got Flash, <laughs> we got metadata, we got software defined, we got open source. I mean, all these, the confluence of these mega trends going on. Uh, um, it feels like, like we've never seen this much before. Maybe it just feels that way because it's new, but I don't know. What do you think? Well, it's definitely new. And let's sort of take that stack in order. Uh, we haven't seen this much innovation since SANS were new. And at that time, everybody rethought everything and we sort of went through, you know, how were arrays built and how are they connected and how do people manage them and, and what apps do you put on them. So we're going to go through all that again. Uh, starting from the bottom, Flash changes things. And just in time, because HDDs have, are really out of gas in terms of IOP performance. Chap, like yourself, said, you know what, you, a lot of times you hear, oh, Flash is going to give way to whatever, pick your persistent mm -hmm. storage medium. And he said, I don't think so. I think it's going to be a hierarchy of semiconductor devices. Do you buy that? Or do you think that, um, that one will win? It's, it's possible, but we think one will win. And exactly which one in any particular year is kind of crystal ball stuff. Mm -hmm. um, we, the enterprise guys, don't make the decision. The decision's made by the consumer electronics people, the cell phone guys, the tablet guys, uh, and our job in enterprise is to do uh, technologies of aggregation. So we put the stuff together, make it not fail, make it maintainable, make it scale. Metadata was the New York Times of the headline. Mm -hmm. Metadata, metadata. You know, this is, this is now a mainstream term. Right. People are now savvy to the fact that metadata is ab about information about information is out there, highlighted by the, the mainstream NSA story around PRISM. And it's a big data story. So talk about metadata. Ambu said it's about understanding what you have. There's metadata of metadata. And that, that the policy-based um, data management is going away, he believes. And it's going to be much more dynamic, much more intelligent. Um, can you comment from a technical perspective where we are in that journey of, you know, metadata's been around in storage for a while, but you know, more importantly, as it becomes much more agile data, as it's more data processing going on at the edge of the network, whether it's Internet of Things, mobile devices, or just consumer data, policy-based data management, slow, static, can you just talk about that and how you look at that? Well, so, so number one, it's, it is good and exciting that people are waking up to the existence of metadata. Um, it's, a, it's an incredibly important uh, technology and discipline. Metadata comes in lots of different sizes and shapes. And you know, the answer to your question about how do we manage storage and what role does metadata play depends on what you're doing. So let's, let's use a, a uh, maybe less controversial example of how <laughs> metadata might be used. Um, if you're a, uh, a large uh, sporting uh, organization that puts on football games every Sunday, uh, you collect video of uh, every game, every play from 20 camera angles. And so you've got you know, mountains and mountains of video, but what's really useful is to have annotations that say uh, in seven minutes and 20 seconds into the second quarter, so-and-so caught a pass thrown by so-and-so and it went 25 yards and here's the impact that it had on the game and here's who the defender was and how he got beat and you know that kind of stuff that's online not, online gaming too another another sure. you know first person when they took a shot when they did they traded currency right you know, i mean gaming is a great example of you know xbox so, announcing so big things so all these today. things where you you create easily searchable information to to layer on top of information that is not easily searchable so if all you had was video finding the play where guy x threw a pass to guy y is pretty hard you need a, a human with eyes doing that. Um, if you do annotation, and somebody has to do the annotation, either uh, automatically or a human, uh, but once you've done the annotation, you now have data about data, and you can use that when it's time to go find the thing you want. 
But when you want to put the video clip on TV, you don't put up the metadata. You put up the video of the guy catching the. We're adding some twists. So let's let's start from the basics. Software defined 101. What is it? <laughs> uh, well, so you start with the idea that. Uh, what you really want in terms of seeing storage is an abstraction. So we've been we've talked about virtualization for a long time. You can think of that as step one in abstracting in the underlying hardware. Abstracting the underlying hardware. So I see um, idealized behavior. I see homogeneous behavior across all my storage. I do snapshots in a single way. I can over provision. I'm not I'm not constrained by the physicality of what the storage can do. Um, okay, so that's that's progress. Um, now, the, the next step uh, might be being able to dynamically create instances of that storage asset. So not only do I have this homogeneous abstraction, but if I decide right now, oh, you know, I need a little more, or I need more bandwidth on it, I need to change the quality of service that it's providing, I can do that. So provision capacity and, say, performance right. through an API call. That's right. That okay. is, um, uh, let's manage this through business policy. So rather than just being responsive to the demand, also have the notion of what really is the business asking for by rule. Uh, so yes, I want good response time, but this data can't move outside of my country or uh, has to be protected in some form of secure encrypted way when it moves outside of my data center. So it's not just responsive to immediate perceived need, but here's the rules that you have to abide by within that uh, response. And, and allowing full stacks, multi-vendor support, open standards, all those things, the tipping points of flash and open collaborative. What, what, what are you look, what's the one tech you're looking at that you're watching closely that they, everyone should be mindful for? Well, um, I'm not sure this is exactly what you had in mind, but the one tech that I'm watching because I think it's interesting and I guess I think we don't really know all the places where it's going to be used is object store. The, to me, the really interesting thing about object stores is that they're simple, they're easy to program to, uh, and they are likely to be the place that, say, mobile devices reach into to get whatever data the app on that mobile device knows it wants. Good for batch. A lot of batch um, and real good time. For, Anything. Good for immediate demand from, you know, you want something on your phone. Uh, yeah. There's a directory somewhere that knows where that object is. Go reach in, get it, pull it out. Get. Excellent. Put get. Put get. Okay. Simple, simple, easy, and probably a lot of demand for it. Yeah. Claude, thanks for coming outside the cube. We got uh, wall to wall, nonstop IBM events, Dave, are great. We go all day long. We have a lot more to cover today, day one of IBM Edge. And again, all day tomorrow. Stay here on siliconangle.com. This is the cube. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>